It's a shift from dehumanizing conditions into the ones that favor life and hope and honor human dignity. Transformation happens first inside of the person. A person has to feel uh, confident, capable, and be motivated to want to engage in a process of change. We don't talk a lot about love and development, but it captures all that we do. Um, Self-esteem, positive decision-making, sense of belonging, courage to step into one's purpose. I think really ultimately that love is the tool for transformation. My name is Deo Gracias Nis Onkiza. I am American born in Burundi, a country with some of the worst health indicators in the world. I'm also the founder of Village Health Works, grassroots health organization that also provides education, agriculture, and economic development programs in one of the rural areas that is very poor cool in Burundi. My name is Molly Melching and I am the CEO and the founder of Tostan, which is a non-governmental organization based here in Dakar, Senegal. Tostan actually creates the conditions for change and transformation through its community empowerment program, which we have been able to implement in hundreds of communities throughout West Africa, in six African countries, and even in Somalia and Djibouti. My name is Megan white Korea, and I'm the founder and president of Zana Africa. And we're here in Nairobi, Kenya, where we deliver pads and related health education through comics to girls to help them step boldly into the promise of their future. When a girl or woman knows her rights and choices, she can step into the life she wants. Pads are a vehicle to deliver the support. Support to know that her body is her own. Support to know that her voice matters. Support to see an expanded picture of what's possible in her life. When I was starting Zana Africa, I asked this one girl how she'd feel if she got in their supply of sanitary pads. And she said really shyly, very quick of a whisper, I would feel like the whole world loved me. And at that moment, I really knew that this is what I wanted to do. I attended a declaration by a community that, after learning their human rights, had decided that female genital cutting was a harmful tradition that they needed to abandon to achieve the goals and their vision for a better community, for well-being for everyone in the community, particularly for their girls and women. And since then, over 7,000 communities in West Africa and Somalia and Djibouti and East Africa have decided to abandon this practice as a united family uh, wanting better health, respect for human rights, a better future for their daughters. In 2008, Janine, a 21-year-old mother died in labor. She was in an ambulance and she needed a C-section, which she could not get. No mother at Village Health Works should die from a preventable death because there's no access to care, particularly surgery. Given the resources available in the world and the medical discoveries and the knowledge we have, how should we not care? Shouldn't humanity's greatest progress and achievements be in how we value the dignity and the well-being of others? All of this is with the foundation of this human rights approach, one that is respectful, non-judgmental, and that really is patient, encouraging people to take the time they need to really understand why they are making these changes and do it in a way that will bring about unity, peace, and well-being within their society. Transformation is in a girl's life when she's able to step boldly in the promise of her future um, and unleash to make her own informed decisions. On a societal level, that's when that happens across a whole generation and girls are able to break the generational cycle of poverty uh, for that community, for that nation. Do something good and bigger. Do it in the spirit of kinship and humility. Live every day with compassion. Don't wait for anyone else. You are the one.